Hello and welcome to Essence of Knowledge uh, online satsang, which is for the participants of the Essence of Knowledge program. Shivam is asking, how does potential manifest? So as you know, the answer to the how questions, or you can generalize it to all the seven questions that usually the answer is always negative. So when you are asking how, you are asking for a process of manifestation and uh, there is no process. Because this process will be another manifestation. This process is already a manifestation. To have a process to manifest, you must have something which is beyond manifestation. But uh, the definition of a process is that it is already visible by any means possible. And secondly, the word potential is actually a theory. It is a concept that is used to explain our experience. Because on the one hand we say that uh, existence is emptiness without any qualities. But what do we see? All the qualities. We see a very colorful, dynamic experience. Lively experience is happening around us. So how to explain this? So we use a word potential. That the existence has infinite potential to appear as anything, as this experience. It does not assume a process there. We do not assume a process. We simply explain the experience like this. That if it is empty, but still there is experience, that implies that there is a potential for the experience. So what is, is already present in front of you. There are no hidden processes. The um, existence is as it is, it is present right now. It does not require a process. It does not require a step-by-step activity to convert the potential into manifestation. No. What you are seeing is existence right now. No processes are seen and we will never see them. This is one explanation. A second explanation is uh, any process will require time but existence is timeless. Time is another concept that is used to describe uh, processes and so on. Creation, manifestation. But uh, the manifestation does not take time. So there cannot be a process. So on, you see. You can uh, introspect like this. That uh, the problem is not that there is a potential and there is emptiness and there is experience. These are not the problems. The problem is our assumption that there has to be a process at the most fundamental level. No. The processes happen when the manifestation is already there. The processes in the existence, they appear to happen. So we cannot take this that is already manifested, an activity that is already manifested and apply it back to the emptiness or the existence. That will be an incorrect assumption that let me try to apply a process for manifestation also. That will not work. So that is why the existence or you, you are the existence, should not be analyzed in terms of an object. Existence is not an object, it is you. So, in the end we say the existence is unknowable as an object. It is knowable by being what you are. You are the existence, so you can be that. But as soon as you assume that it is something, it is a thing, it is an object, no, it becomes incorrect. It is not an object. And we apply all these seven questions to check whether we find anything, whether we find any objective qualities at all in the existence. And we see that no, never. It is mysterious. From this point of view, it is mysterious. That cannot be analyzed as an object. But it is very simple. You are that. And here only the intellect will be silenced. That kind of intellect can be silenced. And you can be that. That is the blissful state. Shivam is asking, how does experiencer have a memory? No, experiencer means the... Witness of all the experiences, including the memory. This is the definition of the experiencer, that which experiences. And what is memory? Memory is an experience, which is simply a playback of the events that happened. The events that happen in our life, they are stored in the memory. They are stored somewhere and whatever that is, we call it memory. And they are played back sometimes. That is called memory recall or recall and this whole process happens in front of the experiencer 
on the screen of the experiencer these activities of the memory appear so the experiencer does not have a memory it is not a owner of the memory it is a witness of the memory like everything else like the body like thoughts like perceptions sensations is the experiencer owning all these things all these experiences have you asked the experiencer do you own all these things do you have all these things and the experiencer will not say anything it does not even have a mouth it does not even have a voice it does not even have a thought or a mind or a brain memory is totally far away experiencer is that aspect of existence which witnesses everything the witnessing capability of the existence it is empty it is zero it does not have anything it does not claim to have anything so who has memory this organism has memory human being has memory you can say it has a brain the brain stores experiences and these experiences are recorded sometimes which are witnessed by the experiencer experiencer will never say it is my memory no the organism says it is my memory it is my life which is stored in the memory isn't it what is your life everything that is stored in the memory shadow of the events that is what ordinary people call as myself person ego and the this play of ego or person or life is appearing in front of experiencer where is experiencer the whole existence is experiencer so you can say if the experiencer says that let us assume imagine that experiencer has a voice can speak if you ask the experiencer you are the whole existence why do you say you don't have anything so the experiencer will say i don't have anything i am everything now we are talking at the non dual level non dual level i am brahman i am the existence so i don't have all these things i am all these things so do i have a memory no i am the memory which memory am i all the memories because i am everything so at the level of duality you can say i am pure i am simply witness i am experiencer i don't have anything all these fleeting experiences they come and go and at the level of non duality you can cannot say that i have everything you can only say i am everything i appear to myself as everything including memories organisms bodies worlds any experience all experiences are my own imaginary illusory form so on the path of knowledge it is very much necessary to differentiate between the experience and the experiencer check the experience of memory is it experiencer and nobody will say it it is is it an experience yes so the experience cannot be experiencer and the experiencer cannot be experienced this is this must be verified thoroughly logically get get as much evidence as you can regarding this one sentence that the experience cannot be experiencer experiencer cannot be experience this discrimination must become very very solid for you it should become true for you and then then you will be able to answer all the questions like how does experiencer have a body same thing you can you can uh, project anything on the experiencer so again check is body experience or the experiencer and very obviously it is an experience so the experiencer does not have a body nor the experiencer will claim the body that it is my body no it will not say once you get the knowledge of oneness non duality there you can say i don't have a body i am the body which body all the bodies infinite numbers of bodies are me where is the problem what is what is the ignorance part here that the experiencer has something and only one thing this one body one memory that will be ignorant uh, point of view that means no knowledge happened there so knowledge starts with knowing what you are plus knowing what you are not what you are not i am not any experience so my suggestion for shivam is find out who you are find out how many things you have how many things you own what is this i what is the relation of i with the experiencer that we defined as the witness this is basic knowledge this is self realization so go back to your videos revise check contemplate introspect is it really like this or is it my direct experience that i have a memory 
or this experiencer with symbol told me has a memory so you can check it yourself i encourage everybody to check your own experience first you should know the meaning of the words so if you don't know the meaning of the word the definition of the word uh, there, there is no chance of any contemplation or introspection you won't be able to even think correctly for example you are associating memory with the experiencer that means the definition of the experiencer is forgotten now the experiencer is now taken as a object which ha- which has another object or which owns or which claims another object or the experiencer is a person which is having things only person can claim to have something i have a house i have a car i have wife even people claim to have their children isn't it i have two chi- two children one boy one girl do they have all these things no <laughs> these are illusions so when illusion can claim another illusion that i have this illusion or it belongs to me or it is my part isn't it like a person can say i have two hands the person is saying here that i am a body and the body has two hands two hands are part of the body so what has happened is the experiencer is not understood and it is understood as a person or an object or a body and that is why the concept of having or attaching or being a part was added to the experiencer remember experiencer is not an object object means any experience all experiences are different objects only whether it is physical object or the body or mental objects which means thoughts emotions desires memories they are mental objects an experiencer is none of these so not only i am not memory i don't even have memory this concept of having something is not applicable to the experiencer only somebody something which has parts can have something your computer can have a memory because it is an object there are parts in it one part is memory this body can have memory because body is an object a part of the body's brain which has memory you can say right now is not true <laughs> but there is a memory there it is associated but experiencer is not an object so it cannot have a part attached to it because the part of the experiencer will become an experience and the experiencer is not an experience not any experience so in other words we say i am pure i am empty what are these words saying do not think of myself as any other object which has this which has that which contains these so i'll give you an example sometimes we forget things we have forgotten many things of past uh, week past year many years ago many events are forgotten but i am still there so do i feel that i lost something as an experience or as a witness has my witnessing ability diminished because i forgot something no but as a person i am not the same for example if the person forgets his name his education his family and he even forgets how to read write speak then obviously the person has suffered a loss the person is no more the same person because these are his his parts person's parts but that does not never happens with the experiencer the experiencer is happily experiencing everything just like it was experiencing whatever it was it has the person has forgotten now it is experiencing the forgetting the thoughts that i forgot this i forgot that i don't remember this these are the thoughts which are being experienced so what is there what is there which is experiencing and you will never find anything you will never find it that is why we say experiencer is unknowable it is the witness of knowledge knowing also do not try to grasp it as an another object then how will i know you know the experiencer by being the experiencer you be it are you not it try to find am i not the experiencer some people will say no then probably you are some something else some other experience but you will soon find that these all experiences they keep changing they come and go they appear disappear but you are there so which experience are you so what we can do is we can prove that i am not any experience which is our familiar uh, progressive elimination method neti neti you cannot point to the experiencer look here is the experiencer you are that it's not possible to do that you cannot prove it like this you can eliminate what you are not that which you cannot eliminate will be you will be your essence that is the definition of essence the essence cannot be removed and it will never change 
the name of the essence is experiencer that is the definition why we call the essence as experiencer why nothing else actually you can call it anything you want it's name only why did we call it experiencer because all experiences go away change but this capability to experience them remains and this capability is called experiencer but it is not a capability of somebody or something it is existence itself so hopefully it will become clear if you go through it again go through this contemplation on experiencer find i find it out what it is check in your own experience because you have nothing else to check and then go on removing whatever this experiencer is not check if it has a memory check check if it comes and goes and you will soon find memory is unreliable it changes all the time right now i forgot i have forgotten what i said in the beginning of satsang that's why we do the recording isn't it because whatever i say i forget in 5 minutes can i say i have the memory even this person cannot claim that i have a memory it is a fleeting experience because if i have something i should have it always but there is nothing like this whatever you call as i even this person or this body it does not last so nothing has anything in the end nobody has nothing this is the final truth and then the mind comes ignorance comes and it starts claiming everything i have this and i have th- remember nothing is mine Not, uh, nobody has anything it is all fleeting dust of illusion it will blown away very soon like a dream and then this mind says in ignorance probably i am he told me my guru told me i am the experiencer i have something probably finally and this ignorant mind then projects other objects on the experiencer also <laughs> not knowing what it is not understanding what it is so this much pointing is enough for shivam the rest of the job is yours verify whatever is said shivam is asking how am i one with experience you will need to drop the word i to become one with experience there is experience which is the dynamic part of the existence and there is experiencer which is the witnessing part of the existence and there is i which is imaginary thought in your mind so when you drop the i you are left with simply the existence so i am not one with experience i am not there whatever is there is one investigate the reality of i i means ego and you will find it is not there what you find is experience and experiencer there is nothing else nothing else exists and they are one so the oneness is achieved by dissolution of ego which means simply the knowledge that it is not there it is not true and whatever remains is one so many people must have noticed that this answer is somewhat different from our usual answer that we give in program where i say that i am the experiencer and experiencer is simply the essence of the existence and the experience is illusions in the existence and dream of the existence and so they are one i and illusion are one so that is another way to arrive at the same thing but i think he have he has already gone through those chapters where the analysis is done or the synthesis is done oneness is shown so this time i have given a little bit a different answer so my advice is to shivam that investigate the reality of this word i what is i and uh, revisit the chapters on oneness there it is shown that experience and experiencer are one and many people will like to call experiencer as i after knowledge the position of i shifts to the experiencer and uh, after the knowledge of oneness there is no need of i also it is only one so hopefully that will clear up and if you do not understand and the arguments given there or the logic or the direct experience that is shown there then you can uh, ask me again in the meeting which part you could not understand that should be asked in our meetings because normally what i'll do i'll assume that you have not listened to that and i'll send you back to the video like somebody asks me suppose what are the means of knowledge i am not going to repeat the same thing in meeting it is useless 
I'll ask him to go and watch the video on me on means of knowledge. And if there is any doubt there, why is direct experience means? Why are books not means of knowledge? A specific thing which you could not understand that should be asked in the meeting. Same thing about those who are doing the verification. The answers are in uh, chapters in the videos. And while doing the verification, if you get a doubt that this thing was not clear in the video, I have a doubt about this thing, that should be asked in our meetings. So any other questions? Shivani is asking, what is Anubhav Kriya called in English? Experiencing. Experiencing. It is the state where no distinction is possible between experience and experiencer. The non-dual state, which is already there. The division is made by the mind and this process of dividing is also an experience. There is no real division. The division never happens. So realizing this can be called the knowledge of experiencing or the non-dual knowledge which you must have already seen the knowledge of oneness is simply that that actually it is experiencing the division of experience and experiencer is done by the mind it is done for convenience it is easy to understand like this shivani is asking what is the difference between mindfulness and awareness practice apart from former being object oriented while latter is subject oriented as per my understanding, we do not use this word mindfulness. It is used in uh, traditional Buddhism. On our path, we use awareness, which is English translation of uh, being a witness. So another word for awareness will be witnessing. So I don't know what mindfulness is oriented to. But awareness is oriented to self, which means you. You will need to bring in the awareness of the self in every experience. That will be the awareness practice. That is same as witnessing or Sakshi Bhav in Sanskrit. And uh, the practices on the traditional Buddhism or any other path are beyond our scope. Even if you know what it is, you should not do it. If you want to do it, join the proper institution there you should do it so awareness is simply remembering who you are in your day-to-day -day life everyday life as much as you can effortlessly with a loving gentle peaceful feeling it is simplest simplest practice in the whole universe but it is most powerful practice in the whole universe no other practice is this powerful simple is most powerful in spirituality less is always more shivani is asking you said to repeat all events that happened in darkness and recall them in awareness and this was very helpful as now next time when a similar situation arises the mind will act in awareness my question is can this be done for future events is it recommended to rehearse an anticipated situation which is bound to bring discomfort to the mind in awareness so that if it is all happens the mind responds in awareness very good question and very good thinking by shivani that will be a very good experiment just like uh, the past events can be replayed in awareness to train the mind to respond next time in awareness same way future events can be imagined in the mind and you can imagine yourself responding in complete awareness it is very much possible yes now you you can experiment like this see what happens it is all a training of the mind there can be more ways to train the mind you can ask your friend or relative to act like the other person who is going to probably make you uncomfortable it is just like a rehearsal of a drama all life is simply drama you can rehearse it and your friend or relative can create that situation and now you can train yourself to act in awareness or not act at all is most of the situations are resolved simply by not acting most of them sometimes we need to act and that must be done in complete awareness so these are various ways to uh, do the training i remember in old days ancient days i don't know whether did they do it nowadays or not but the guru used to set up a drama small drama 
small situation, a test or a trial of the student to check what happens, how they respond. So nowadays we are completely online, so we cannot do this. But life is our guru now. Our day-to-day -day activities are helpful in training us. Every day new situations arise and we get a chance to refine ourselves. It is a training. Life is a school. This human birth is a learning opportunity. So yes, using some uh, methods, you can accelerate your learning. You can make it faster up to a limit. Keshav is saying, when practicing awareness, I have noticed that sometimes mind starts playing the role of experiencer, observing and rating the practice. It is a strange trap. So this is strange, yes. And sometimes the mind will say, I am the experiencer. And that is not a big problem because all these things are happening in front of the experiencer. It becomes a problem only when there is no knowledge. The experiencer was not understood. And so the person is assuming another name, another role, like you said. Person says, I am not the body, I am not the mind, I am not. I am the experiencer. Now I need to do this, I need to be like this. But it is a, a result of uh, not getting established completely in knowledge. When you are established completely in knowledge, the mind will go silent. As soon as this realization happens that I am not the body and I am not the mind, I am not any process anywhere. The result is silence. So my suggestion will be to let the mind do whatever tricks it is playing and watch it in complete awareness. It is guaranteed that it will go silent. It will become silent. Mind is very powerful thing. In uh, some previous meetings I have revealed this thing. This is a secret. It can affect the body. It can affect uh, people around it, it can affect situations, even it can affect matter. So you are observing just the tip of the iceberg, which is this mind. Totally depends on what is inside it. So nothing to worry, it's all normal things. Thank you everybody for attending today's satsang. I'll see you next time.